Hi, my name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting, plaster, and mural workshops. And I also complete commission projects for clients all around the country. Today, I'm going to show you an Italian plaster technique using our Grisello Italian plaster in a color called roasted pepper, which is this, with a gold Italian polishing wax. So let's get our tools, let's get our materials, and let's get started. Well, so the first thing we're going to do to get ready for today's finish is base coating the surface. Now, I've actually jumped ahead a little bit, and what I have done is I've base coated the surface using the quartz base primer because we're working, working with lime plasters. So the quartz primer is an interior, exterior, water base, cleans up with soap and water. It comes in a white base. You can tint it uh, using pigment, never paint. It will not tint with paint. You have to use pigment. Pigment is a highly concentrated colorant. And I rolled it on the surface with a quarter inch nap roller. Now, because I'm going to use the Grisello plaster, what I have done is I applied one coat, I kind of jumped ahead and applied one coat of Marmarino. So I always use my Marmarino. Well, I don't want to say always, but a lot of times when I'm using plasters, especially Grisello, I'll lay a bed coat of Marmarino down. And what that does is on uh, any wall, it'll help even out the wall. And I'll do two coats of the Marmarino so I get a nice, smooth, solid, tight base versus a uh, a lot of the walls are irregular. Even though they look smooth, they're not really smooth. Um, it could be some you know, bad drywall work, some seams might be showing. If you have an orange peel, two coats of Marmarino is going to get rid of the orange peel, and you can go right over top with your Grisello. So Marmarino, this is the fine Marmarino, comes in a tint base. Uh, it's white. You have to add pigment, never colorant. I'm sorry, never paint, because pigment is a colorant. So you add your pigment to it, and you have to make sure it's a lime-compatible pigment, because a lot of pigments are a lot of limes. Let me start again. A lot of pigments are not lime-compatible. They could have an adverse reaction. I'm saying they could. So you could get away with trying something, and it might work, uh, but it's best not to experiment on somebody's project. So lime-compatible pigment into the Marmarino to tint it to any color you want, and you can actually get it to black, uh, dark red, dark greens, all those cool things. But today, I'm just going to use a white base. So I've already put one coat of Marmarino on so I can get ahead a little bit. And I'm going to grab my stainless steel spatula that I just cleaned and my stainless steel trowel. And I'm going to take the Marmarino and put on my second coat. So if you watch the other videos, you'll, under, you'll, you'll see the, how I do this. It's basically the exact same technique, just changing the plaster. But the bed coat went on because I'm working over a substrate that's uh, not perfectly smooth, just like most walls. So if this is my wall, I'm going to come across my ceiling like so. And then I'm going to pull it tight. And what that's going to do is give me a real smooth base to work over. And I know it's going to take more work, more layers but it's going to give that Grisello that mirror-like shine or mirror-like finish that we're looking for. I'm kind of concerned how I'm putting on. You can hear the aggregate in there. You hear it scraping? I mean, it's, it's thick stuff. So you don't want to put it on too sloppy. And now, here's something to think about. See the black carbon marks coming out? So if I'm doing a white finish, this trowel is no good because it's going to leave carbon marks. However, because I'm going to bury it with roasted pepper, which is a color that looks like a roasted red pepper, Grisello, you're not going to see it. But this is a good example of how you can see those carbon marks. But I want to put this on. I'm just stabilizing it because I am using a fair amount of pressure right now because it's a, a thick product and I want to get it tight. Meaning smooth. So I'm kind of really pushing it into the other product or into its base layer. Now, the Marmarino, even though it does have an aggregate, I can get this stuff really smooth. And so can you. And it's not going to take a lot of, um, not a lot of, I mean, it takes a fair amount of pressure, but not a ton. Because if I don't put enough pressure on it, it's going to just kind of be there. Like, imagine putting icing on a cake and you just lay it down and then you come back and kind of even it out, smooth it out. That's kind of what this is. Here I just put the icing on and now I'm going to come in and just kind of make it pretty. But I have to use a little bit of pressure to bury, I don't want to say bury, to backfill. 
this layer into the previous layer. Now, and we'll get into some more Marmarino stuff in another time, but now I'm just going to come through and clean it up because it's got some stuff here. And that stuff, there's irregularities or there's high spots, low spots, well, they'll tra telegraph through. But look, can you see the discoloration taking place? That's the carbon coming out of the trowel. And this is a high quality stainless steel trowel. But this could be a cool finish all on its own. But I don't want to get too far ahead of myself or go in a different direction than where we should be. But that could be a neat finish. Come back and wax it. And it could have a kind of a Carrera marble feel to it. All right, so now this has to dry 100%. Let's let it dry. Let's come back and let's get started with the roasted red pepper grisello. Okay, so our marmarino is dried. We're ready to apply the grisello. Now, like I said earlier, gris uh, grisello, the color is called roasted pepper. Grisello is a lime-based plaster into your exterior. It will polish to a mirror-like finish, high gloss. It'll be just stunningly gorgeous. Tints with pigment never paint. Pigment, highly concentrated form of colorant. Paint is a diluted form of colorant. You actually use pigment to color paint. So if you put paint into plaster, you're going to dilute your plaster and it's going to fail. Pigment, highly concentrated color. Put it into the whatever you want. Make your own color. Uh, you just add it into it and always dry sample to see what you're going to get. Make, make a dry sample so you're going to dry it. See, like if you make uh, black and you pour a bunch of black pigment into your plaster and it looks great in a can. Well, you put it on the wall and you come back and it's gray. So always make a dry sample or work with somebody's recipe or buy pre-made, pre-colored plaster. So roasted pepper, grisello plaster, interior, exterior, cleans up with soap and water, tints with pigment, let's go. Our trial and the grisello. Don't need a whole lot to get started. We'll start with about that much, right? And let's do it. Across the ceiling first. You don't cut in the whole room like you would paint. And it's okay if some of that base is going to poke through because we're going to do more than one color. There's the other wall. Or come out. And then you're going to work wet to dry. Gather it up, put it back where I want it. Need a little bit more. It does go pretty far. That's the good thing. And everybody's like, well, what's the square foot coverage? It, that really depends on you. How proficient you are with the tools, the materials. It can go pretty far. Like with this, two coats, I could probably get about 300 square feet out of a gallon. When you're starting out, it's probably going to go down considerably. So this is going to be our first coat. Let it dry 100% because if we, well, we don't have to, but we will. Lime plasters are different. They don't have to dry completely in between coats, but it's a little bit better if they do. Uh, well, it's not necessarily if better if they do. Um, if you're not too familiar with them, it's easier. But if they're too wet, it can actually curl up. See that? I just reactivated it and pulled right up. That's why you got to wait sometimes. So let's go in there and fix that little spot. And that's it. Okay. So we're going to let this dry, come back, do our second coat, and carry on. See after it's dry. All right, so first coat's dry. Let's carry on with the second coat. Same material, same tools, pretty much the same technique. But we're going to probably use a little bit more pressure because we want to make sure it goes into the base layer of the bed coat. We don't want to put it on too thick. If we do, it'll become too opaque and we're not going to be able to see through it. Or not see through it, but we're not going to see the other layers telegraphing through. And 
And then after it sets up a little bit, we're going to come in and burnish it and get it to be that mirror shine that we're looking for. And then we're going to finish this with a gold wax. So I'm just, I'm just steadying it with my hand because I need to get a new easel in here. This one's uh, seen some better days and it's creaking a little bit. So that's what that sound is and it's time to make a new easel. So that's what we're going to do is we're going to let this set up, come back, and burnish it. So I'll see you in just a few minutes. All right, so the plaster has firmed up. It's about 80% dry. Um, that's when we want to compress it. It'll actually be the best time to compress it to get that high gloss mirror-like finish that we're looking for. So nice clean trial, about a 20 degree angle in here. And we're going to start with a light pressure. And I'm going to gradually increase the pressure as long as I don't hit any resistance from the plaster. So if I get some resistance from my plaster, like it starts to pull my trowel, then I know it's too wet and I'm going to have issues. And I can also see like that's really too wet right there and maybe right a little bit here. So I want to stay away from those areas because they're too, I, if it looks wet, then it is wet. All right, so I, I can touch it. Look, nothing's coming off. But if I touch it here, one, I'm going to mess it up. You can see my fingerprint. Two, I'm going to get it on my hand. We don't want to mess up the finish. So light pressure. And I'm just going to, just on the edge of the blade. So what it's doing, it's taking all this damp plaster right now and compressing it into the layer underneath of it. So you're going to see the layer underneath telegraph through and you're going to get some darker spots here and there. And that's the layer underneath. And then you're going to get some lighter spots which means it's more opaque in those areas. So you're not going to really, it's not going to allow the air to, uh, the plaster need to telegraph through. So let's just hit it. I like to go a couple different directions. And I know people are going to be like, well, you can't do an entire wall when it's damp. No, but you can get a helper. One to help you burnish while you plaster. And always keep a rag handy because you might get a little bit of something from somewhere and we want to make sure that that doesn't go back and damage our plaster and leave scratch marks. All right. So I'm going to come that way. Let's come down a little bit or intersect what we just did. wet where that tape is. All right, I think we're okay. Oh, man. And I knew I was going to do it, and I did it to myself. <laughs> All right. Okay. Let's see what we got here. All right, so let's bring it around. There's that, uh, there we go. Nice and shiny. Super smooth, looks like it's got a good bit going on. Okay, get that off of my hand. Now, let's finish this. Now, there's several ways we could do this. One is to leave it natural. Remember, it's lime. It will resist water or moisture, but it will not resist staining. So, you gotta be very careful of that. We could put a clear wax on it which will seal it against staining. It'll actually darken and enrichen the plaster up a little bit. It's up to you. But this one looks really good with a gold wax. So the wax that we're gonna use is the Italian polishing wax. I used it pretty much on all my plasters. It comes from Italy, from the factory over there that we get all the plaster from. And it comes in clear gold, silver, 
bronze, coppers, all kinds of crazy fun colors. So this one is just going to be the gold. Now it cleans up with uh, mineral spirits because it's real wax. So that means if uh, you ever want to change it, you're going to have to sand, wipe the wall down a couple times with mineral spirits in a rag, sand it, prime it, and move on. You can put the wax inside or outside. You can put it on top of anything. Italian plasters, uh, textured plasters, glazes, paints, you name it, furniture. So, here's our gold wax. Let's put it on this trowel. And let's get it on the surface. And I put it on just like I do my plaster. Nice thin layers, organic pattern. I don't want to see uh, hard, hard lines, meaning I don't want to create lines this way or this way. Very natural, like puzzle pieces. Don't want to put it on too thick. If you put it on too thick, it's going to dry cloudy. We're going to have an issue then, because once it dries cloudy, it's a mess. Just taking my time. wet to dry like always. Got to be real careful, meaning you don't want to see trowel lines because your wax can leave a trowel line like so and then it, it, if it's into the dry or the unsealed plaster, it's going to be there and you're not going to be able to get rid of it. But because I did that where the wax is, I'm able to get rid of it. It's not a big deal. Biggest thing is you just don't want to rush through anything you're doing. And then this has to dry 100% before I can polish it. And I'm going to polish it with a uh, soft cotton rag. I mean, you could use a car buffer with a lamb's wool pad on it. What you don't want to use is uh, anything with ink, like an old t-shirt, colored t-shirt, because this colorant or the dyes could come out and damage your plaster. So let's let this set up. Let's let this dry. We're going to come back and polish it up, and we'll finish. Wax is dry enough, or not dry enough, it's dry. So I'm going to get my rag, and for this, I'm just going to grab a piece of, uh, I've got some cheesecloth laying around, so I'm going to use that. Wad it up. Get rid of the lint. Go in here and just polish this up. Should have left a little bit unwaxed so you could see the difference between the richness. So actually, you can see, I'll show you here in a second if you look down at the bottom, but I'll bring this back. Whoa! Gotta be careful, I don't wanna drop it and get it into anything. Now, what's fun is I actually, this is the exact same finish that I have in my bed, master bedroom on an accent wall, because I have all these deep, rich beddings or colors in my bedding, my pillows, my comforter. It was a perfect accent wall. All right. Look at that. Nothing came off of my rag, okay? So, what I was saying about the wax will richen up this finish. Look here. There's the plaster without any wax. Sorry. And there it is with the wax. Let me pull this tape off of here. Now normally I will not strip tape on a job site so slow, like this because I don't want to get all this mess. I'll take my time, remove it the right way, but for the sample board, I just want to get it out of the way. And I'll go back later and paint the edge of this board black because this looks, looks nice framed in black. But there. There you go. Can you see that gold highlight? It's hard with all these. There you go. Look at the shine on that. Bring it this way. Maybe that's better. Huh? Ooh, yeah. I have to look over there so I can see what you're looking at. Sorry. But there it is. Roasted red pepper Grisello Italian plaster with a gold wax. 
There you go. Nice and simple, easy, fun finish. Beautiful finish. Remember, it's just a plaster. We can do so many things with it. Stick around and I'll show you how to put a crackle medium under this for something really crazy on the next time. But anyway, I want to thank you for watching. Do me a favor and hit that subscribe button down there and give me a nice little like. And uh, I'll see you next time. My name is Ron Lehman. I'm from the Faux School in Frederick, Maryland, where I teach decorative painting workshops, classes, and commission projects all around the country. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.